did personally miss. Um, I, my doctor was Patrick Trout, really, and I thought he had a he had a kind of vulnerable quality about his doctor, which I thought had disappeared through both John Kirby and Tom, uh, um, and I just wanted to bring that back. The other thing was that, that, um, uh, that Pebble Mill at One, I don't remember that program, Pebble Mill at One, used to be a sort of magazine program on at one o'clock. Um, they invited me on one day um, to interview me, and they very kindly got several members of the public to come along to suggest ways in which I should play uh, Doctor Who. There was a thought I needed help. <laughs> Stop it before I started. Uh, and, um, and I can't remember what, I think there were about eight of them. They all had their little say about, oh, I think you should be like this. But one of them said, I think you should be like Tristan, but brave. <laughs> so that really was my blueprint. Uh, uh, for playing the fifth doctor. Just be like Tristan, but a bit braver. Um, yeah. But I just thought, I just wanted to make him a bit more vulnerable. A bit more, a less, uh, 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 less certain about what he was doing. That's all. Became that thing which a lot of experienced writers <laughs> went on to went, came on it and wanted to do as best job as they can. Other children shook store, uh, shows were a bit patronising and not very ambitious, but you had writers like Terrace Dix and Robert Holmes just really wanting to do things. I mean, Robert Holmes wanted to scare the little buggers behind the sofa, <laughs> and it was ambitious. It was always ambitious. And I was just saying this this morning to someone that. Anyone, any child interested in story, uh, went to Doctor Who. They didn't go to uh, um, Tomorrow People, or they didn't go to some other Captain Z. So people of my age, and Stephen Moffat, and all those people, they all started to Doctor Who because at that delicate age, they wanted to be interested in story. And I think it's endured because it's the only show I like that really the show there is that really embraces change. People look forward to it changing, which is, if you lose the main actor on Star Trek, it's, it's like the end of the show. But if you lose the main actor on Doctor Who, it goes, great, what's the next main actor going to be like? How's he going to deal with the Daleks this way? So in no other, no other TV show actually is strengthened by the cast changing and by different types of story coming along. It's the, 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 the TV uh, cliche is once you've lost a cast member, you're whole below the, the waterline, and then it's just not as good as it was. But Doctor Who just evolved and evolves and evolves and evolves. So that's why it's endured, and, and that's why I think it's special from a writer's point of view. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I also say that there is this incredible British eccentricity to it. We don't have great uniforms and a fantastic spaceship. Um, which always lands in the right place at the right time. There is a very eccentric British quality to it, which I think makes it far more endearing than being, you know, super fit, super smart, just the troops go out and they deal with it. Um, it's dealt with in, in a completely different way. And you are left with this hero, and there have been some fantastic lines in Doctor Who, and I love the one where the Doctor said, nobody dies today. You know that? And was it the one where everybody lives today? And there is this feeling with the Doctor that at whatever cost, you feel the Doctor is going to do the right thing and you go through this journey. And I think in life, we don't have that person. There isn't a, a president or a prime minister <laughs> or necessarily that kind of hero in your world where you can be absolutely sure that this person is going to do the right thing. And I think that kind of fantasy release, 
that there is somebody you could rely on on that level, I think is a real anchor somehow to our imagination, our passion, and our sense of justice, which we all hold in there somewhere. So I, I think there's that level on it too. Uh, go, um, yeah, how do I follow that? Um, <laughs> well, I think it, it is fantastic because it's, it is inspirational. I mean, when you read, I mean, there's so many, there's such a queue of people wanting to be the doctor now, including virtually every member of my family. Um, and, and that's what it, that's what it, that's what it in, in, encourages. You know, you see young people around here, and they kind of want to be the doctor. He is an inspiration almost. He's a great, he's a great role model. I've always believed that. And I've always believed he's a great role model for young men, actually, as well, young boys. Um, and so it's very important. Of course, it, it helps that uh, you can, as Neil said, get different doctors to, to play the part. It's unlikely um, we could have got William Hartnell to hang on for much longer than he did. So they came up with this wonderful idea of regenerating, and uh, and, it, and, it, and it's carried on. I, I, I happen to think that, and who knows the secret of this, you'd be like saying, well, it's impossible to say what the secret of Doctor Who is, otherwise everyone will be doing it. But uh, um, one of the things is, it, it obviously, it, in some way, is inspirational to creative people out there, whether it be writers, designers, actors, directors, producers, because the truth of it is now that the lunatics are running the asylum. Uh, you know, the, the show is now being run by the people who watched it. When, when I and when Tom and uh, uh, um, uh, John Perley were doing it. So uh, uh, they've grown up, you know, Russell T. Davis, when he was asked what do you want to do next with BBC, he said, I want to bring back Doctor Who. And here we are, and he came back with a thunderous and you know, fantastic quality show. Um, so that, as long as that continues, as long as we're there inspiring uh, people to go out and write for Doctor Who, uh, as, as obviously negative. Uh, I think it'll continue. Uh, it may have the odd hiatus, but I think it, it's, it's, it's here to stay. One more thing I'd just say about writing. Doctor Who is, you can see it, it's an amalgamation of every single piece of classic science fiction and fantasy literature there's ever been, and particularly European and UK uh, works. From right from the start, you've got the wardrobe from The Lion of the Witch and the Wardrobe. And then you've got the, the machines, the Dalek machines from all of the worlds. And then you've got Jekyll and Hyde thrown in there. So it's borrowed from every single piece of good literature there's been in the last two centuries. And then with John Pertwee you get James Bond. And then you get something else in there. And then you get something else in there. So you can actually absorb, it's like a big snowball, and it just keeps absorbing other ideas from other, other pieces of literature and, and in the movies, and just get, grows, and it just makes them good. and it just, it, it swirls them around and, and it, it comes out as something special. I think borrowing is very good in television and it borrows like hell from everything. <laughs>